full on QVC equipment. I'm my own film studio. I'm trying to also look at uh, people are communicating. Uh. More chat. They're going to start recording. Okay, got it. Yeah, they're just uh, they're just setting up. I can see your husband I, in I, the background, <laughs> <laughs> and the cat's running, and the cat you know, is running. He is the yeah. He's oh, he's right there. I, yeah, the husband is being seen on camera at all times. My, I hid mine in a closet. Anyway, it's good How to are see you. you. I'm so good. good you. This is I like really the best, best part the best of my week. day. You had a good yeah. week? Oh my God. I, I have to tell you later about it, but like it, QVC went like out of control. It was like Amazing. record blowing, record blowing. Amazing. Yeah. So. Um, let great. me just check and see if we're ready to start. And uh, let's see. Okay, we are, we are on. We are on with you. This is like, uh, Jason and I know each other for a long time, good friends, and um, we started a pandemic house party. So I'm gonna just like think of this as what we normally do. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just have like a chat and, um, and um, you know, I really do adore you and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. And, um, you know, and I, 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 I love saying those things like silly things like, I love Wu. I thought of tonight as we were going into this, I was thinking of something else. Like, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm feeling woozy. <laughs> <laughs> feeling woozy for you. Um, but enough about me and it's, it, this is about you. So I actually, you know, for, for those who are watching and, and for our students that will uh, be able to see this later on, tell us like what, what inspired you to uh, build a career in fashion? How did you, how did you go there? How'd you, how'd well, you get there? <laughs> how did I get there? I actually don't know, but like, I just got there. Well, you know, I started, you know, I grew up in Taiwan and then, um, I remember going to the toy store and I have an older brother who's two and a half years older than me. And, you know, my parents were expecting me to run to the Nintendo section and the Transformers section and made a beeline to the Barbie section. And so they were like really surprised. And, you know, in the eighties in Asia, it was really like kind of taboo for boys to play with dolls, right? So that was, um, oh, somebody can't hear Jason. Uh oh, I hear you perfectly well. I know. Huh. Hold on. One second. Let me just figure out this technical difficulty. I love these live things. There's always a drama. <laughs> it wouldn't be um, a Zoom without a drama. Um, Can you hear me now? Can everybody hear me? Uh, we'll check. I hear you perfectly well. So, I mean, I can hear I'm, you. I'm on the right Hi, channel. Mo Hi, Mona. Can you hear me? Oh, Mona hears me. Okay, good. Okay. So, back so we're talking also. about Taiwan. We're talking about you playing with Barbies. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, like I, I really just like, you know, uh, was different. And uh, my, my, you know, even my immediate family, like, judged me pretty harshly, not, not my parents, but like, you know, on the, everybody had an opinion about it, you know, and my parents who I'm very lucky to have like, such amazing parents, just, you know, they just kept buying me dolls, you know, and I would restyle their hair, undress them. And I would ask questions because my grandmother was a very good seamstress. So I would ask my, you know, you know, like, you know, obviously dolls had breasts and I didn't have any. So I was like, why is there this like line here? And then she goes, that's a dart so that you can fit into a 3D kind of a thing, you know? And that's kind of how I started learning how to do, you know, like that's kind of when the fashion bug hit me, even though I didn't really know what fashion was. And then, you know, I would, um, there's a bridal street in Taiwan and my parents would always drive by there. And then I would have to go to every store I would study the mannequins, see how they stood up 
underneath and then draw them. And so it would just be hours. I have to go every week, you know? And so, you know, uh, it became really apparent for me, my parents, that like I was not going to fit in and, you know, into regular academics. And so they moved myself and my brother to Canada when I was 10. So, uh, uh, yes. Okay. So, Canada, where fashion exists. Book okay. ahead. So, yeah, what happened and then, there? And then, um, I had an amazing tutor. She's still my mentor. Her name is Miriam Kaufman. She's in Vancouver. And she, you know, we started with the dictionary, uh, with, uh, with books. And I was just like, not interested, you know, and I didn't speak a word of English, right? Like, none. Like, the, you know, and, 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 um, she brought in a stack of fashion magazine. I remember it was, this is, this was, this is actually, she knows the story. I was flipping through a Vogue magazine and I remember Amber Valletta was on the cover. It was 1993. And then there was like a Christian Lacroix uh, spread. And I- I think I, I think I actually booked that cover. Yeah, you probably <laughs> did. I and think then, I did. One of the issues, Stephanie Seymour was going to all the fashion shows. Uh, yeah. And this is funny. And she was being front row in the fashion shows. This is around 94, 90, yes. 94. Oh, yeah. Just no, front no, no, row was, in every fashion show. I did yeah. that. I yeah. actually did that. We Because it was actually a transition for her from going from model to actually an influencer and being part of it. And it was a whole thought out thing. I, 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 this is just always amazes me that, you know, you do things in your career and then you don't know who's watching. The, ne the, the next great American designer was watching. I, I mean, that. so, but I, mean, I have such, such a razor sharp images. Uh, like, it re I, I remember it. So Stephanie Seymour taking notes in all the biggest fashion shows. Amber Valero was in a slip dress on the cover and it was a Christian LaCroix editorial with a little splash of Galliano, you know? And then that was when like, I was like, I have, that's when I was like getting desperate to learn English because I wanted to read what everything was about. And so that was really amazing. And then I begged my mom for a sewing machine and uh, that's kind of where it all started. That's amazing. Like to just like the, the love and the passion for making dresses and making yeah. clothes. You know? And you know, it's really interesting how full circle is this. That was, like, that was like, what, like 25 years before I met you, but you already touched my life through the work that you were doing, you know? And many, 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 many years later, I would be working with Stephanie and Amber. I mean, Stephanie, you booked it again when I shot my first campaign with Inez and Manu. And Stephanie hasn't done a lot back then. Remember that? It was in 2013. Murphy think, opened the show. Carla Murphy opened the show. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, I have to say that for me, you know, the next generation and, and also talking to the students, I mean, there, there are people watching us uh, that, that will be part of our community and will be yeah. embraced in our community. And I think also like uh, my own longevity and the longevity of our clients, like Stephanie, yeah. Carolyn, Amber, is because you embrace the next generation. And I remember talking to Stephanie and saying, listen, Jason Wu is the big American designer. He is it. And this is good for you. I mean, to, to, to do this shoot. I think this is a great opportunity for you. And it, it did, it was, it was amazing. And uh, uh, what the French restaurant, sorry. It was in that- Le Grenouille, Le oh Grenouille. My God. And, and, and the Nezim new shooting and it was gorgeous. And yeah. It was amazing. And it was good for everybody. You know, it really yeah. was. It was and, it's, and I think it was at that time too, I was starting to really like, it was beginning to define who you are. Who, what would you say the Jason Wu brand or the Jason Wu customer I know you're branching into other things and we'll get there, but like, what would you say that Jason Wu I customer mean, is? She, she's the, you know, fiercely feminine, sophisticated, refined, and appreciates quality over quantity. And she's definitely not a trend driven. She, she's buying things to build a wardrobe. I think that's very important because those are very much my values, right? It's like, I am not interested in being, you know, you know, since, you know, my start as a young designer, that's like a long time ago, you know, I just have zero interest in being, you know, uh, cool. I, I don't, I don't care. You know, what I appreciate are things that are craftsmanship driven, that are quality driven, things that are 
everlasting. You know, those covers that I grew up with are still iconic today, you know? And they're very, that, and that, that's, that's a very interesting part about, you know, the 90s for me is that not only was I bitten by the supermodel bug, right? I, that's when I came across RuPaul, who actually is interesting story later. Many years later, we would do a project together. In 95, uh, 2005, we ended up meeting and doing a project together. More on that later. But Rue was the face of Mac Cosmetics back then. And yeah. she was all over the back, you know, fashion magazines and everything. So my mom bought me my first English language album and it was Supermodel of the World. Yeah. So yeah. I think so, I think it's interesting that you bring in Rue because I, I also think that, you know, um, also gender norms, the way we have socialized and where you know, women are, are socialized traditionally have been uh, taking a back seat and things have changed. And, and the thing about also a uh, drag performer is there's some sense of masculinity and fearlessness that yeah. um, as men, you so get socialized. So it, it, interesting that you reference RuPaul because I would think your consumer is also a fearless woman, a woman yeah. who blazes her own path and trail and and also it's classic it's feminine and yet you could run a board meeting yes <laughs> i mean it's it's all of that and i i think uh i think you do such a good job and i i love your clothes and and it, it's also no no miracle that like uh, michelle obama said okay well you know these are important days two important days and so you're two times in the smithsonian um and and that that as an american makes me so proud yeah i mean how how did how did that make you feel too when you first uh found well, out it was, was amazing because you know like i moved to america when i was 14 for school and i grew up in new england and in connecticut uh, and then I went to France for a year before I moved to New York. But, you know, um, my goals were to be shot in fashion magazines and to be recognized as a fashion designer, right? And I never um, imagined that I had the potential to have more than that, you know? Like, you know, I, I mean, one of the most surreal moments was at like, you know, President Obama's uh, uh, birthday and you know M Michelle's wearing like Manolo uh, 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 Rafia flats and she's like yeah. and and like you know and like you know we're just talking she's introducing me to her cousin there's Oprah and there's Steven Spielberg and then there's some like athlete that I don't know that I'm sure is so famous and I just like you know I I mean I was like and the music I is cannot. amazing yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and the music is amazing. And like, you know, and, and I was just like, I was like, and, and the amount of people I met, right? Through the process, I was like, I cannot believe I'm in this group of people. I had to pinch myself because I'm like, I never thought this was even possible for an immigrant and also for, you know, a first lady of, you know, who set many precedents, right? She set so many precedents as a as president and first lady. They set so many precedents. I was in the moment, and you know, I, I you know, she she not only wore me for the first inauguration and the second one, which is actually has never been done by a first lady. Usually, they choose two different designers. She also wore me for the concessions, you know, like the uh, President Obama's last speech. Until the last day, she just posted a picture of her in this red coat, you know, of the day they. Um, uh, their last day in the White House, and that was also Jason yeah. Wu. And yeah. so, you know, and, and you know what's great is, and we, we, we still have a great relationship. She, um, she really gave me, she gave me a great shout out in her book. And I just think it's like, you know, it, it's a testament to, you know, you know, if you, you know, you know, even the, the, you know, the craziest thing can happen to you if you put your heart and effort into everything. And, Life sometimes can throw you some bad wrenches, but sometimes it can throw you pretty awesome ones too, like really great opportunities. I think the key is also that you are, uh, you know, you, that you're good. You have to be good at what you do. And the fact that you were passionate and that you really um, achieved greatness, uh, 
it, it, people embrace that. And, and that's where, that's why you were where you were, where you yeah. have to pinch yourself, you know, yeah. uh, that, that really must've been a real pinch me moment. And even just hearing you talk about it, I, 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 I can only imagine, you know? I mean, I um, mean, I went home, I had never seen inauguration. I went home and I saw it and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and all of a sudden like Beyonce was starting to sing and at last, and then like, you know, the president comes out and then the first lady comes out until that moment, I didn't know she was wearing me. And it's like, to me, it's like one in a billion chance, right? And then she's like, I was like, holy, I don't know if I can da, 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 holy da, 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 da. ass, da, 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 da. I was like, that is me. And I was eating Domino's pizza at the time. So, because, you know, that's like, you know, it's like a starting out designer in a studio apartment. And like, I was with my husband, the pizza went on the floor and I just bawled myself because I was just like, I cannot believe that this is actually happening to me. Well, again, it, it, it happened to you because you're good. You're good at what you do. And I, I believed in it. Yeah. I believed in it. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. So when you think about being there and you, if someone showed you a crystal ball of what 2020 was gonna look like, where we were gonna wear a mask and we were going to be um, quarantined, um, what would your belief be at that time? I mean, they showed, I, 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 you know, the thing is, you know, I never go to fortune tellers and I never go anything because I truly, truly believe in the essence, right? That like everything happens for a reason. And I know that sounds like, oh yeah, that's like mumbo jumbo, whatever. But I have to say like, if somebody, if I were to go back 10, 20 years, right? And I have to go through all my mistakes again, I would rather do that than not because I think those things are what actually made me who I am. So, so if you had shown me the crystal ball back then, I actually don't think I would have liked be where I am because I think I would do everything avoided. But then I think like, I just, I think I had to go through things. I had to make my mistakes in order for me to be here right now, you know? And trust me, I made a lot. Well, I well, I bring up 2020 because it's a pivotal year for you. I think that, you know, yeah. um, one thing I would say about you too is like, yeah, the old expression, you know, you take lemons and make lemonade, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, so the fact that we were all quarantined, the fact that, uh, you know, we were wearing masks, the fact that we need to be socially distant, you know, you and I were talking, you were still, you know, forging ahead and saying, I'm going to communicate fashion. I'm going to do it. And everyone was saying, well, I don't know what you're going to be able to do. Maybe it's a film, maybe it's this. And you were weighing in all the opportunities. So like, it's amazing that you actually were one of the few American designers that actually put on a live fashion show. Yeah. So that's that the just, help of, that, well, that, that was our, me, that's, that's our project. Yeah, it was a little collaboration that we did, but I have to say that, you know, that that also is also something I'd like to, say to the students that, you know, like when, when life throws you obstacles, you have to like find your way around it, over it, on it, up it, you know, and you are that person. Well, and obviously, you know, like everybody's looking to save money this year because, you know, things are difficult, markets are difficult, retail, especially challenging. And I remember when your team called, you know, Strand, you know, who I've been with, uh, who represents me at WME and uh, Leslie at ING called, it's like, we have an opportunity from Lowe's, right? They would like to underwrite your show and provide you with all. And 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 I think a l I, I, I think I wouldn't be out of line to say most of my peers would just say no right away. They would say, like, listen, we don't associate fashion with hardware, right? But I'm like, I want to hear more, actually, because I want to know what this can be, right? And you know, I met Marissa Tilburg who's amazing. She's the chief marketing yeah. officer there. And, 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 and we said, you know what? The idea isn't about putting logos of every brand on your thing, right? I was like, right now, it's about a time of escapism and fashion still has that transformative power, right? Even though fashion can be looked at as vain, as uh, wasteful, but also a great fashion experience could be amazing, even if it's seven minutes, right? And I said, well, Lowe's has an amazing, one of the largest nurseries in the country. They have 
all the wood you would like in the world and sand and all the things you would want. I was like, I'm going to replicate Tulum on the top of Spring Studios. And that's exactly know, that, what we did. Well, that also is a great designer as somebody with imagination, creativity, and a vision. And yeah. the fact that you figured out like, yeah, they have all of these moving parts and that you could create something magical on a roof. And I, I, did you even realize too, like when you were thinking about that, the roof, because for me, when I arrived um, and I, I was just completely transported, but then again, I walked through the boardwalk and the beautiful, yeah. you know, and I, I was in Tulum, but then boom, I'm looking at the Freedom Tower. Yeah. And, yeah. And I yeah. and and it was striking to me that what an amazing location that was uh you know just Indeed. seriously it was like the combination of so many worlds and also during a profound moment of a pandemic and the yeah. hope and and you know how New York always rebuilds itself and you were yeah. part of that narration for fashion week you were part of the inspiration of that you know fashion is going to continue and um, and you're gonna you're you're gonna work around the obstacles and the and the challenges. Tell me about the collection though. What was what was the collection about? And and what was? What... I mean, it was about bringing happiness and joy. You know, it was like these bright colors. You know, it was just like this is where I want to be. I was actually in Tulum last week, so I actually got the real thing. And so I did, you know. But but you know, there were so many levels to this project, right? But like, what's very interesting about the freedom tower aspect and there's a uh, on my instagram there's a and also on img focus instagram there's a uh a, a, a hyperspeed speed video of the build that dominic from img focus geniusly put together i mean he is the best fashion show producer i've worked with i mean i love and so yeah. um but I, I, I'll tell you the significance. I was like, it's Im important that we create this escapism, right? Like this amazing force. You feel like you're transported because you know what? That we all be in sweatpants and being home for like seven, eight, nine months, right? And so like, we do need that a little bit of social. And, but you know why it was important that the Freedom Tower moment? Because I moved to New York in September, 2001, five days before it happened. Wow. So I saw everything wow. in person. I saw everything in person. And that was my, I remember my cell phone didn't work. My parents thought I was dead. I was in Chelsea and I could stare right down Fifth Avenue. I've never been able to, I've never been to the Twin Towers because it was destroyed five days after I moved to New York. So wow. there's a certain, and I, oh, and I remember most of my friends I'm, uh, uh, were living in dormitories downtown, right? And I remember going to Wall Street and it was literally like the set of Independence Day 4. You know, it's like, it's gray ashes, blinking light, you name it, it's there. And so what's very, very interesting here is that I see New York recover. And I, I truly believe it will again, but without the creatives and without people that believe that we can, we will not get there. I, I, I never made the connection that your, uh, your history and your moment in New York really began post 9-11. That's, yeah. that's really a, a, a big statement that your career and what, what you built and everything is, was part of the rebuild. And, and uh, you know, and- I saw and, it. I mean, now, you know, I, I, I recently moved, I moved in June, but I, I lived in Tribeca for the last five years. And, and now it looks like nothing happened. I mean, also since then, Hurricane Sandy also happened. So like, you know, it was all flooded in Tribeca. Now it's as flourishing as ever, right? Yeah. And so, so you look at that and you look at the, how tenacious New Yorkers are and how tenacious people can be through the most traumatic of events. And so you, think, oh, actually, this wasn't that long ago, actually. Yeah. You know, you know, where yeah. like, it looked like a movie set. I mean, it was truly horrifying. You know, I am going to start out, you know, taking some questions. But before I do, too, I, I really want to talk also about like how you uh, pivot your business. Uh, yeah. Also, part Let's of the pandemic. Well, part of the pandemic also, like I'm obsessed with Mr. Wu Eats. I'm obsessed with your cooking. I'm obsessed with, I, I mean, and I, what I love is that you, everything is thought out is that, you know, you're cooking and then you post 
this beautiful picture of so it's like you already have this gorgeous recipe book i i i see it it's already there <laughs> um yeah what, what was cooking always something that was a huge passion of yours something that you know yeah. you're perfecting as you go along i mean and i love also that you have a as a very eclectic uh palette of of everything you do everything well, you know the thing is like i always love cooking i cook with my my mom's a great chef and uh i worked you know i always always next to her so i i had great upbringing in that but i wasn't cooking like i would say 365 days of 2000 uh 2019 i was eating out like i, I was like maybe like 300 of those days where I was out, right? And all of a sudden in March, I hit a wall. I'm like, I'm home and I have no social plans. Uh, my, my, I was like, I have Ivan on house party at nine and that's it, you know? And I have, you know, by the way, by the way, I met- And John Lemon. Food. <laughs> and and also Adam Plasner, who actually, you know, is still on house party with me regularly. So you need to come back for a reunion. I know, I gotta come back. I and then I end up back. meeting Tyler Florence. It's like hilarious. I met more people through this pandemic than normal times. Isn't that it's, funny? It, it, you yeah. actually connect with people in more, more ways, right? And so I was like, I hit a wall. I was like, oh, the world is over. You know, like that's when, when like every vendor was canceling, canceling orders. Everyone's panicking. Grocery stores are empty. And then I just thought like, you know, I started like, first of all, I started only buying from small independent businesses because those were not the ones people were rushing to. So I think that's actually one thing that's very important is like the, the idea of supporting independent businesses in New York is really important. And, uh, and I said, you know, I'm like, I can't travel. I'm used to traveling two, three times a month, like you. You know, I'm, we're always somewhere, right? And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, my schedule is empty for the next six months, mm -hmm. and 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 then some, right? And so I'm like, what do I do? How do I adjust it? And then so I I I, I took a notebook, and I haven't really written a physical notebook in a very long time. And I just started day one. Uh, so the task was this. I started an Instagram account called Mr. Wu Eats. And every day I have to make a cuisine from a different place. And it has to be something I've never made. But I've tasted, but I never made. So that just became a thing, you know? But I would how spend you, four or five hours. I mean, how do you run a bit? I mean, cooking is a, it's, it's an undertaking too, because it's prep, there's like, you know, stuff to buy and whatever. And, and you're running a business oh. and you're doing other things and about to get to the next thing. Uh, it's like, that's a lot. I mean, cooking a meal too is a couple of hours. I mean, between yeah. prep and everything. Da, da, da. It's three and, to four you, hours. But you put it in every day. Yeah. You put every in that time every day. day. I start at six, we eat at nine, you know, and that's it. And I house party people while I'm prepping for entertainment. Well, and I'm sure you're doing some business calls too. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like after six, I'm usually done. So like, it's great. Like in between, like, you know, but like, it was like a great, like, uh, it was like almost meditative, right? It was great. You know, I know, I actually know a bit of your day because like you do fill up your days with, you know, meetings and everything. Cause I know I can reach you like at all God's hour, you know, after dinner, you're available, you know, and I, I love that about you. You're totally available. Um, I just want to add one more thing before the questions, and that is, uh, you know, congratulations, you're pivoting also to a different consumer, yeah. QVC. Um, what inspired you about reaching a, that consumer? What is your goals in that? Yeah. What, what, what's your feeling on, uh, on, on QVC and, and the con customer that you're, you're trying to reach? Well, you know, what's, what's very interesting to me is like, you know, I've been like, you know, I've never been like, completely in the fashion bubble right i mean part of me was you know and i i listen i love a couture moment you know you know i love american couture you know i love a fantasy moment but yep. you know the thing is like i i i feel like after more than you know 12 years in the business you know i've done a lot of different projects you know people used to make fun of me for those projects you know i mean i i remember when i first started working with brizo you know on a line of faucets over eight years ago people thought oh you know he's just doing whatever everything you know and and and, and actually it's really become some of my biggest successes is that we've been able to leverage Jason Wu not only in the fashion space, but also as in the lifestyle space, you know? So launching a bunch of home projects, 
this year we launched my kitchen faucet collection, which is shipping right now. Um, you know, and uh, we launched a collaboration with 1-800-Flowers and that's been amazing because, you know, I, I, my father was an avid gardener. So I just grew up with a lot of flowers around me. So that's something I really love. And then QVC, I was reaching a whole different clientele. I launched last Thursday and, you know, we're already almost sold out of everything, right? So the goal, the idea is like, I'm a fashion designer. I want to dress women. And also I want to dress women of all, walks of life right and I never really look at I don't like to look at fashion as being elitist because it has that reputation but in the end of the day as to me as a job as a fashion designer it's about making an impact in people's lives whether it's a super glamorous custom gown to something a sweatshirt hoodie that a woman can with a you know with a little satin detail that she can you know drop off her children and make a meal and, you know, do three phone calls, three Zoom calls, you know, like those are, you know, those women are stars in their own right, right? A lot of them are my friends, by the way. My, most of my friends are not in fashion. They don't get to, like, it's just not reality for them. Well, and it's, it's so great to have somebody with a vision too, to like create all kinds of looks of your life. I mean, fashion is also an expression of yourself. And so- yeah. You know, and, and, there, and there are different moments of what we're going to wear lounging about and what we're going to wear to a meeting and what we're going to wear out at night. So I, it sounds and, to me that you're, you're really trying to cover all of it, plus the lifestyle around it. Yeah. The fa I want a faucet. Oh, my God. It's like, you know, because those things matter to me, too. The little details like a doorknob, a faucet, you know, uh, flowers, all of this, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and everything very around my clients. And what's really exciting is in that. January, I'm launching Jason Beauty. We're the first designer prestige brand to launch in a mass stage price level. So in January 17, Jason Wood Beauty will be in 400 Target stores. So I'm really excited about that because it will be the first of its type. type you know, uh, it's a mass stage level price point. And uh, I'm working with the original founder of NYX Cosmetics on that. So that's already, and, and you know what's amazing is that we, we went to Target in Minneapolis this January, this past, this mm -hmm. January when it's so cold and the products in stores January 17th of 2021. So it's just like, I, I think like being able to act fast. And I was like, I was like, if Target wants to take a meeting with my beauty line, I'm flying to Minneapolis in January. I don't care how cold it is, you know, because like, I don't think, I think it's about, I, I, I think it's like, you know, I, I think it, it, these are opportunities that are sometimes once in a lifetime. And I, I don't have a big idea of myself that I can't jump on a plane and go to Minneapolis in January, even though the cold is basically unbearable. But I mean, this, this is why I wanted you on, because I do think, you know, uh, you know, when you're talking to a student body is, is really to think big. Think big, think about, you know, not only the craft of design, but like the customer and all the things that surround them. And, and you really are a wonderful example of, of what, you know, maximizing your possibility, reaching your greatest potential, you know, and, and, and helping others and being so thoughtful about it. I mean, you're really a true, a great American designer. And I think, you know, what's great, it's like, you know, the first person that was super nice to me was Ralph Lauren. I mean, he would send me flowers and cards every time something would like, would happen. And like one day I wrote him a note back. This was like, you know, like in 2008 or something like that. And I wrote him a note back. He always sent a handwritten note. So I wrote, I was like, I yeah. don't know him. So I wrote him back and I was like, let's have lunch. And the next thing day, you know, you know, his uh, assistant uh, called and said, oh, Mr. Lauren would like to have lunch. And it was at, at the, uh, the, it was at John George uptown. And <laughs> I walked in, I thought it was gonna be like his assistant and everything. No, it was a table for two. And then uh, the, my favorite anecdote is like, the assistant called before lunch said, Mr. Lauren wants to insist that Mr. Wu doesn't pay. I was like, I can't afford it anyway. Like, you know, I was like 24, you know, I'm not going to John George for lunch, but right. like, anyway. And then, you know what, Ralph shows up in his Western jacket and he sat down and he told me, 
his story, how he started selling tithe off the back of his car, you know? And yes. also the same great designers like Tommy Hilfiger, Michael Kors, I admire them all because you know what I think? They're all like, I mean, they're so nice and they don't have this big idea of themselves. And even though they're super successful, I, I think that's taught me a lot is like, you know, think big, but never think big about yourself because you really never know it all. And the second you think you're too good for anything is when things start going downhill, I think. You know what, this is a, a, a great lesson. This is a wonderful lesson also for, yeah. for students. I always say too, because you know, I manage talent, I, that, that the biggest talent, the greatest talent in the world too, are people who, you know, are humble and, you know, like, like Meryl Streep and the greatest actresses of the world. She irons her own clothes. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, like, that's it. It's like, you have to be confident in your ability to be great. But once you do start believing your own hype, it's really the end. And, and, um, I would go to dinner with you anytime and I would go to dinner with Ralph anytime and Tommy and everybody but, said, but, but, because they're, you're lovely yeah. people. You're and really they're, they're, they're my examples, you know, like they just don't have this, it's this thing where it's like, you know, like, you know, as successful as they are, they don't get, you don't get the feeling. I mean, I remember in Milan, like a few years ago, it was like midnight and I was checking into the hotel and Michael Kors was standing next to me and it was like one, almost 1 a.m. in that 1 a.m. And then he, Turn around, like Jason, and you know, like he doesn't have to say that, you know, like he, you know, like you know, yeah. somebody as successful as him. I mean, he's just so nice, right? And that's like what what I really look up to, and I think that's something that's actually very American. American designers just don't have this, you know. They, they, they a lot of them are like, you know, you know, you know, they, they, they are, you know, a lot of them just started from, you know selling something from the back of their cars or something, you know, like, you know, or like, you know, so American this one dream. thing. It's the American dream, but they, you they, are they, the American they put dream. The, they put, put the, they put the work in, you know, they don't, we, that's how we differ a little bit from European designers is that we have a lot less of this myth around us. Right. But yeah. what, 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 what I think has always made American fashion amazing, which actually, by the way, American fashion is actually what's trending right now internationally. I mean, if you think about the hoodie, that's an American sportswear item, right? Yes. So, so you know, I yes. think America doesn't always get all the credit for it, but I think it's like we don't have this air of snob snobbishness that 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 I think you know, and and, and that, that I think makes it you know that is very nice, you know. And I I think also again, don't believe in your own hype. I don't. Well, I, you know, thank you for divining American fashion and uh, you are the future of, fa of American fashion. I mean, one question from Melanie is, uh, she wants to know uh, what you're excited about post COVID uh, in the fashion industry. What are you optimistic about? Well, you know, I think, you know, I think what's very interesting, what I'm very interested in, first of all, we don't know when post COVID is. So, you know, but, but what I, you know, you know what I have emerged out of COVID uh, more so than ever before is that like everything around us, resources, everything is precious. So like, you know, things we take for granted, like throwing a bag away. I've never, I, I, I haven't, I haven't taken the shopping bag since March. You know, because like I only carry my own bag because it's just like, you know, just things you throw out, things you chuck, things you don't value, you know, those things. And just like the sense of like in how fragile our world can be has changed the entire way I think about business and the way I think about how I want to run things. Right. And so, you know, you know, the way we run business is always been very conservative like you know i'm not one of those designers to order like 400 pairs of shoes just to see and then use 40 you know i'm ordering like 45 to use 40 you know and things like that like we have to be very calculated i've always really run my business like that but now more than ever you really do realize that resources are important and and the world is delicate it could fall apart at any moment that's what i'm most excited about is that i am now going you know, I'm now seeing the world in a lens that I haven't been able to see before. You know, Mona wants to know, by the way, she's very excited. Her 17 year old was watching us and that she, she's digging it. 
Um, I love that you also transcend many ages. Um, uh, you, what fashion of business uh, trends has accelerated uh, due to the pandemic? Well, I think there's a lot. I'm paraphrasing I mean, I think... that question, by the way, because <laughs> I'm uh, reading and looking at you yeah. and doing everything. But but it's but basically yes. What has I mean, accelerated? Think... What trends I mean, have accelerated? I, I, I mean, I think obviously comfort, especially waist up dressing, <laughs> because you know. Uh, you know, people are at home a lot. So I think that's that's obviously the, the idea of comfort. But I think glamour is going to be coming back in a very big way. Because you know what? Like I, I was at dinner the other day um, uh, at the, uh, at, the uh, at, at, at a fancy restaurant. I forgot what it was called. Uh, in, uh, in, in Wall Street. And it was like four tables outside. And it was this woman wearing like a gown. And I was like, she's kind of fabulous. Like, I'm kind of feeling like, like she's amazing. Cause you know what? Like, hey, you don't know, like through this pandemic, you could, you could realize it's like tomorrow could be the end of the earth. You know, like, why aren't you living your best life and use, you know, absolutely embracing every single moment at all times because we really should, you know? Somebody reminded me too, like, it's true. Like after the black plague came the Renaissance and after the Spanish flu came the Roaring Twenties, and we are going to—we are about to do the Roaring Twenties. This 2020 might have just been a reset, but I agree, glamour is going to come back in a big way. And when people are want, you know, ready to go out again, yeah, you're going to want to go out. You're going to want to go out. You're well, things, out, are, go things that we take event, we take things for granted when it's always available, and when those comforts are unavailable all of a sudden, then you start taking those things more seriously, you know? And I think that's important. And you know, I, you know how I describe the pandemic? It's like the Noah's Ark. It's like this. It's like our world has been and has been for a while. And I'm also guilty of that system. A lot of people are guilty of this system it is overconsumption. There's too much of everything. There's not a lot of, but you know, now I think it's going to be more about quality versus quantity, right? And there's just a lot of stuff. Like, it's just like, there's too much stuff. There's too much content. There's too much stuff. There's too much stuff, but there's less meaning towards everything. And I think through this Noah's Ark, the best will survive. And also people that have the most meaningful things will survive. Well, Allison is holding on to her meaningful um clothes from Target with your Target collaboration. Once she wants to know if you're going to do any any more uh, collaborations. Uh, not, not any collaboration now. Now we're really focused in on longer term things. But if you like my Target collection, definitely check out QVC.com. It, it's, it's an amazing price. It's all size inclusive. So go from petite to 5X. So that's also something that's very interesting. And that's actually also another Ivan Bar pioneer is the first in size inclusivity models. I mean, most agencies still will not even have a girl that's of you know, a different size. And I think, well, you know, I mean, but, but, but look, look at Ashley Graham, look at Paloma, look at Precious Lee. Precious you know? Lee, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, representation is key. And thank you for embracing size and, uh, you know, uh, and showing it. And, and um, I think it's important. I think, you know, and look to me, diversity means uh, more consumers and more revenue. And it's like and more opportunity. I, I, yeah. I, it's, and thank you for recognizing that. Um, uh, I'll, I'll say her name. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Sujartha. <laughs> Sujartha uh, wanted to know since Obama, Miss Obama, uh, Michelle Obama uh, uh, was a highlight. Any other highlight of celebrities or personalities that you've dressed or worked with that stand out? Oh, I mean, I've, I've met so many ama amazing women like throughout my career. And, you know, honestly, like, I'm really proud of the fact that like um, many, many major red carpets were usually one of the only American designs, designers on major red carpets, you know, it, it, and we do not endorse. That means we don't pay people to wear our clothes. It, these are true relationships, you know, and and I, I, I stick very true to that. First of all, we can't compete with like a big house in Europe that has millions and millions, right? To to endorse people that want to wear my clothes, they have to really 
you know, they, they really like it and they really want to wear it, you know? And so, you know, a, a lot of it is product placement nowadays, but for me, it's that organic, vision right so you know it's like you know I, i've dressed so many incredible women it's really hard to name just one right i mean like diane kruger name is names. obviously somebody yeah, yeah right diane. diane kruger is obviously somebody i've worked with a lot in my career i mean um yeah. you know she's a very close friend of mine so i think that's something that's really you know I've, we had many many collaborations um you know kerry washington i've known since uh i was 24 so like you know we our relationship have lasted all these years right she she took a chance on me and wore me to can in uh, uh 2008 so that was a long time ago and then you know to this year the last big red carpet was the oscars and i dressed rebel wilson rebel was like you know listen it's my first time going to the oscars you know people don't you know i worked with her stylist it, Elizabeth Stewart, who's a genius, also works with Cape Blanchett. And you know, you know, like people, you know, a lot of, like Rebel, people don't see Rebel as glamorous, but she wants to be looked at as glamorous because she's a comedian, especially, you know, like comedians, yeah. you know, don't take be art be taken as glamorous, you know? And I was like, you know what? For her first Oscars, we're gonna make it glamorous so you know we just we did the whole like a gold color she's a pretty dress. woman she's yeah a pretty pretty woman. Woman. she is funny you know and she's really 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 funny and you know i get to dress like amazing women like that to like you know i just i, I think like in january and uh, i mean just just last september we dressed like regina king you know who you know is obviously amazing for the emmys to like my friend mj rodriguez who's trans and i've known her from the voguing scene years before she was on, before she was on pose and she too has never had a custom dress knocked on many many doors but you know people don't you know sometimes people just don't you know like unless they know you if you're anything but anyone a newcomer or somebody different you know, fashion can be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, I would say old fashioned, but like, you know, I just, I want to help my friend look her best, you know, I want to embrace and, you know, as a, you know, beautiful trans woman, why shouldn't she have her big moment on her first Emmys? So there's definitely a lot of moments like that that make me feel really great as a designer. Thank you for sharing all of them. They're so, they were like, I was on hanging on every word. You know, like just about really taking in about each woman and really seeing who they were and really yeah. enhancing their night, their moment, and who they yeah. are. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're getting closer to the hour here. So, like, let me let's take one more here. Um, oh my god, time went by so fast. I know. Could you imagine? Yeah. I, <laughs> but I, you know what? We can house party this. We we got yeah. this. We knew. It's like you know, this is what we do. This is what we do. A glimpse in in our lives. Um, okay, sustainability. Where, where are you standing on that thing before I even, I, before I even ask further the question, I wanted to know like your feeling on sustainability, how to achieve it, and is it a goal? Yeah. Well, I think the goal is to make less. And I, it's so counterintuitive to what a person selling fashion to you should be saying to you but it's everyone should be buying less and buying better at any price point. I think nothing should be thrown away. And I think, you know, at the end of it, there's all, you know, I've learned a lot about, I mean, you know, uh, recyclable fabrics and things like that, right? But, you know, anything that's manufactured over again still takes a lot of process. I, my personal belief is that we are just over consumed. So buy better and, and select better but don't buy as much. If you think you need to buy one, you know? And I think I, that's I'm glad the I asked, ultimate I'm glad way. And I shouldn't glad. be saying that because I'm trying to sell clothes. No, no, no. And, and, and because, well, you, you, I'll only buy you, you're the best. Um, so, like, so keep selling. But um, if you were gonna look at sustainability too, how do you like, how do you keep the craftsmanship? If you are gonna like, you know, do something that's recycled or, or, is is there a way to do it that keeps the craftsmanship, keeps the level of excellence? Um, yeah. Well, there's a lot of ways. I mean, I just think, you know, we still like for Jason Wu Collection, which is our luxury level line that's, uh, you know, at Burke Doors, at Saks. Um, and it's like, you know, we, we still make 90% of it in 
in the U.S. So, but you know, it's not a lot. There's not a lot of import coming in. You know, so I think that's something that's very important and still really like hold. I mean, I I'm still. I'm still uh, in the center of the garment district, you know, where everything is like five blocks radius. You know, I think that's something that's very interesting is to really in embrace local manufacturing and, and doing a lot of that. I think that's oh, very thank important. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for yeah. saying that. Really. Because, you know, like it's really like, you know, a lot of people have deserted the fashion, fashion avenue, put it that way, you know. But I grew up carrying fabric up and down. And I mean, you know, 35th Street is, you know, a bit crazy, but like, you know, it's, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of things going on, but like, you know, it's not glamorous, but you know what? Like, I, I believe in it, you know? It's well, like, you know, I just you don't... know what? You know what's nearby? FIT. What? FIT. Is yes, nearby. I passed by it. <laughs> there, was all, there was so many, I know, there's so many beautiful murals. They had these chalk art for months. I, I passed by that because, you know, I walk home every day because I just decided, like, unless it's really unbearably cold or raining, I am not. So I've maybe taken like 10 Ubers this year. I, I wanted to actually, before we close, I wanted to, I, I do want to address the students and I do want to say that my, my heart and my love for them goes out. This is a very trying year for them and that, um, you know, uh, part of the, the school experience is also socialization and they had to, you know, do things remotely. And um, is there something you want to say to them as well? Yeah, I do. I, I think for students, I think you do you. Don't worry about who's more popular than you. Don't worry about who's more relevant than you. Because you know what? Like, nobody's always relevant at all times, okay? Like, I'm, I always like to say I'm a little irrelevant sometimes, you know? Like, I've gone through ups and downs and ups and downs. I don't care, you know? It's like, I just do me you know, do me and like march to the beat of your own drums. And you know what, drown out the negative voices, especially, you know, in a incredibly, I would say sometimes very bitchy world that we're in, that, that is called fashion. There's a lot of great people in fashion that are also down to earth and that will be true. And that will have, you know, like Ivan and I have had great relationship for years and you know Ivan has always helped me out and I you know would you know I like when he asked me to do this talk I would never say I was like two because you know I answer emails really quickly so it was like two seconds so I was like yes and then I was it you know I was like don't just don't lose who you are you know like it's all smoke and mirror there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in this world in every industry not just in fashion but stay true to yourself Stay true to who you think you what you believe in and I think that's how you can find your how, how you find success and ultimately what's more important happiness that is such excellent advice such a good way to go out um i do wish the class of uh i guess it's 21 now they're gonna go on yeah. to 21 um much success uh i'll be there waiting like yeah. i waited for woo <laughs> and your conversation made me woozy you're so good um, I'm, I'm proud of you and, uh, I believe in you and I believe that you are our future and, um, and for all the students that are watching, please take note. This is, this is true success and this is how you need to be. So thank you all. Have a good evening. Bye. I love Wu. <laughs> Bye. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs>